G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, market has continued to go down. So, is this the start of a much deeper correction? Oh, that really is the million dollar question and in all fairness, I'm not exactly sure. But when we get to the Bitcoin charts, we can see that it is holding quite well, but it's actually well under the 100 day moving average. And I did say if it went under the 100 day moving average, I expected it uh, could go much lower. But the issue is the 50 day moving average is just going sideways, but the 100 and the 200 day moving average are quickly closing up, uh, closing in on the 50 day moving average. So again, we'll have a look at that soon, but let's look at the market. All right, 2.3 trillion, so it is actually up a little bit from where it was, but it's still down 1.6%. BTC dominance uh, almost at 40%. ETH dominance getting close to 20%, and gas prices have basically halved. That's because there's a lot of panic uh, in the market at the moment, and people are unsure, so not a lot of people doing too much in crypto at the moment. But, you know, people are still panic selling. Uh, which, you know, again, I, I never offer financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, but I don't recommend panic selling really in general. Again, if you're in a crap project, then you might have to panic sell just to get out and, you know, accept the loss. But if you're in a good project and it's just a downturn in the market, really all you have to do is hold. If you hold long enough, and look, it could take a couple of years, might take two or three years, but if it's a good project, you're probably going to be in profit in the future and well in profit at some stage. So really that's kind of the secret of investing is just you gotta, you know, you gotta have nerves of steel and be able to hold through the downs. If you're, you know, a day trader and that, well that's a different story and most day traders and traders in general lose money, only some really, really good ones. So yeah, the simple solution for me is I'm just an investor. I do a little bit of swing trading here and there, and sometimes I get it right and it does pretty well. Uh, but look, not enough for me to you know really get into trading. I just invest. It's so much easier, and you know, unless you're a really good trader, an investor will generally make more money than a trader. That's the way it works. Again, except for those few who are just really, really good and trade really, really well. But let's move on and have a look. So again, overall the market caps down, and we can see a fair bit of red there. All right, what's done well is, or has anything done well in the last 24 hours? I can tell you some things have done well. So Hedera Hashgraph, I mean, look at that. It's just pumped straight through. Cardano, I mean, we're getting close to $2. This is, you know, outstanding for Cardano. And, you know, again, people are talking about Cardano getting to $8, $10. You know, I've even heard some people say 12 not so sure about the $12 mark, but I think, you know, 5 to $8 is probably a pretty good sort of price range for Cardano at the peak of this cycle. How high it can go after that? Well, that's another question. Look, Stellar, finally, it's, you know, it's been waking up, starting to make some moves. Dogecoin, you know, making a rebound, and we'll talk about some news for that. Near Project, Polkadot, nice, going up. Pirate Chain, I, I don't understand why. Polygon, I mean, just continues, hasn't even taken a step, and we'll have a look at that. So look, even though the market's been down in the last 24 hours, there's been coins that have, you know, made moves back. VeChain Nano has done really well. Algorand, you know, XRP making a bit of a uh, comeback. Safe Moon, good Lord, be careful. I've only heard bad things about that and that it's a Ponzi scam. So, yeah, Ponzi schemes, you know, scams, whatever you want to call them. They just, yeah... They just sound too attractive for the uneducated and they jump in thinking that these returns are legit. And again, I haven't looked right into Safe Moon. I'm only going on base what I've heard. So I'm extremely skeptical of it straight away. All right. So we've seen that there's been some uh, good gains for a few coins, but overall we have seen a downturn. All right. 24 hours. What hasn't done well? Because we know there's a downturn. So I reckon there's going to be some coins that have been absolutely smacked around in the last 24 hours. Curve, Aave, Leo, Gate Token, Horizon, Arweave, Tele Token, Sushi, Elrond, Zcash. I mean, you name it. You can just go down the list. But look, a lot of these are just kind of minor losses at the moment. So that's not too bad. Hence why, you know, it's only 1.6% down in the last 24 hours. Really, the brutal stuff kind of happened yesterday and the day before. But what we have to look out for is that it's Friday here in Australia, so that means the weekend is sort of coming. 
But as I've spoke before, like there's generally a weekend retracement. It almost happens every single weekend. You hardly ever have a weekend where it doesn't. But maybe that was yesterday. Because sometimes it comes on sort of Thursday night slash Friday morning, uh, which it would have been, well, not Friday morning, Thursday night. It can come Friday morning. But sometimes it can come sort of Thursday night, Thursday morning over in the States. And that's what the last 24 hours would have been. So maybe we are simply going to, you know, have a bit of a pump uh, and then come Monday morning, uh, fall back to cover off on any CME gap that has happened before we go higher. But look, we do need to consider that maybe this is the start of a move that continues to go lower. So let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. That's really the best thing to do because this gives us a good indication. So are things as bad as what people thought? Yeah, we had a steep correction. But we're still above here and again we're still just trading sideways this is just ranging motion really we need to see a candle close down into here before we get too worried but again look here's the 100 day moving average it's almost touching the 50 day moving average at the moment so that's been support and resistance uh the 100 now uh we're well under that but look what's happening to the 200 day moving average not so long ago this is literally only like maybe a week ago or something it's now sitting at about sort of thirty nine thousand. the 200 day moving average was down around sort of thirty two thousand dollars not that long ago i mean you know when let's have a look so that was around about a month ago there we go a month ago it was thirty two thousand. but because bitcoin's ranging sideways it's just starting to push up really really fast and what I do think is possibly going to happen and possibly even likely going to happen is we keep ranging sideways we might even breach down into here I think the buying pressure will snap it up look at these indecision candles with the price so low you know the buying pressure and the selling pressure are just equal at the moment I think the 200 day moving average is going to make its way up to here with uh, Bitcoin just keep ranging sideways. And once Bitcoin hits that 200 day moving average, I think then we go on another push up really, really high. That's personally what I think. Now, will it get exactly there? Will the 200 day moving average have to touch it? Maybe not. I think the 200 day moving average over the next couple of weeks continues to move up like this. And somewhere over around about here so let's say roughly sort of the end of may thereabouts maybe even into sort of june is when we see the sideways action stop and bitcoin then just starts to make its next move up because this just doesn't look like a peak in a market this looks like consolidation and once we hit that 200 day moving average or just get close to it look we could dip a little bit below it but more likely we probably break just before it starts and then we go higher so that's my personal opinion. That's my take is I think Bitcoin continues to travel sideways. Look, could we go lower and come down to meet the 200? Absolutely. But we can see there's just a lot of buying pressure here at the moment. People are snapping up Bitcoin at this price. Are there people, you know, I think this is a lot of market manipulation. And I don't know if Elon's in on it or not, but that's what I think's going on. And look, we'll have a look at some stories that kind of makes me think that's what's happening. All right. <sighs> U.S. investment bank Cowan to offer cryptocurrency, crypto custody services, sorry. Does this sound like the end? Does this sound like, you know, people are now all flocking to get out of it? No, this sounds like things are getting ready for uh, things to heat up. So the trend of U.S. banks offering crypto custodian services continues to expand. And the latest one to join is the $12 billion asset under management giant Cowan. American multinational uh, investment bank Cowan Inc. will join some Wall Street organizations after announcing plans to hold digital assets for hedge funds and asset managers. See, what I think is going on at the moment is a whole lot of hedge funds, because this is what happens when they get in. They start to manipulate the crap out of markets and they will do it for their friends. Friends will say, look, we really want to get in uh, at some cheap prices. Can you help us out? Uh, and look, there's been plenty of stories of things like that happening in the past. And that's what I think is going on at the moment. I think all the big players, they kind of got together and, and you know, they want to build their positions. And then they are going to ride it to the absolute moon. And then unfortunately, going to dump the hell out of it and try and push it as low as possible. That's what I think is going on. That's my gut feeling. I haven't seen Bitcoin trade this kind of sideways for this long in quite some time. And it's all this talk about, you know, these big players getting in now. That's what I think is coming. I think, you know, 
we travel sideways, we range for a while, and it could be an extended period for all the big players to kind of get ready to get in. And then again, they are just unleash it to the rest of the world, you know, and the retailers, and they pump it to you know prices that no one can imagine. You know, maybe the three four hundred thousand that people have talked about, but then they are going to dump the absolute backside out of it and push it so low to all try and get back in again. That's my personal opinion. All right, Huobi Group. As the DeFi and NFT ecosystems continue to grow, and we've got more DeFi news, uh, sorry, more NFT news, it does continue to grow. Singapore-based crypto exchange Huobi has revealed plans to support the sectors with a $100 million funding initiative. So again, DeFi is kind of quiet at the moment. We haven't heard too much from the DeFi uh, platforms. I think that DeFi summer is coming. Could we see some more market volatility to the downside before we get that summer? Absolutely. Like I said, maybe we see another month or two of kind of sideways action and even slightly pushing down. But I think once Bitcoin starts to wake up, it's going to drag everything up with it. Bitcoin will likely go on a run first, suck the air out of some of the altcoins. And then when it gets to whatever point it does, I think then we're going to see, again, a really big uh, push to the upside with things like DeFi. I think, yes, DeFi summer 2021 is coming. All right, Dogecoin, good Lord. So Dogecoin is once again running uh, with the wolves after Tesla's Elon Musk tweeted potentially promising news from the network. So Tesla and CEO, uh, CEO are working with Doge developers to improve system transaction efficiency. Now look, again, last I heard there weren't too many developers on Doge. But if I get information that lots more developers are heading to Doge, that might be enough for me to go right out. Well, I guess I've just got to get in on Doge. Admit defeat. Admit that I missed out on you know some of the really good, you know, unbelievable gains. But again, if the people speak and people start to develop on it, then I guess Doge is going to become a real thing. And like it looks like Elon's uh, trying pretty hard to you know make that happen. But one of my biggest issues is there's a couple of really big whales with Doge. So. I think at some stage they're most likely going to dump and that'll really hammer the price. And my question would be, you know, buying Doge now at about 48 cents, do I think it's going to go much lower? So I don't want to buy it at 48 cents if I think that it's going to go back down to maybe 2 cents or 3 cents. I'm not saying I couldn't get in and out hopefully and make a good profit, but that's what I worry about. Now there's further reason why I'm sort of a little bit more bullish about uh, Doge as well, and again, you know, I'm bullish and extremely skeptical at the same time. U.S. cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase announced it would be adding Doge to its suite of crypto offerings. Now, possibly due to client demand, uh, as has been the case with other major exchanges. So again, you know, the the people are speaking, I suppose, and if they want Doge, then you know, Doge becomes legit. It's that self fulfilling prophecy. Uh, again, that's what Bitcoin was. You know, everyone fudded it for so long, but it just continued to grow and continued to grow to where it is now, you know, around sort of 50000 ish dollars. And again, what's the upside? What's the maximum for Bitcoin? I don't know, but I think there's a lot of upside. Staying on Coinbase though. So Coinbase narrowly misses earning predictions amid stock slump. So there's people talking about it going maybe down to $100. Now, I don't know if it's going to go down to $100, but they're still making an absolute mozza. So I'm happy to you know, see their stock price go down and hopefully jump in at a really good price uh, at some stage. Coinbase uh, reported first quarter earnings of $3.04 per share Thursday afternoon, uh, narrowly falling short of analysts' estimate of $3.07. Overall, the company, I don't know if that's right, must be $300 because I thought it was around $288, but anyway. Overall, the company notched a profit of $771.5 million of revenue of $1.8 billion for the quarter. So they're still making plenty of money. Oh, that's earnings of $3 per share, right? Here, not the price of their share. All right, so each share has earned $3.04 uh, uh, just in that time, I'd say. So again, look, I'm happy for Coinbase uh, prices to come down a little bit because you know that 400 sort of dollar mark I thought was a little bit much and again I think last I heard it was trading at 288 dollars so I don't know if it's going to go down to the 100 but 
I am planning on buying some Coinbase shares. I just thought, yeah, the $300, $400 mark was a little bit overpriced. That was just all hype. But, you know, we'll wait and see. All right, NFTs, as we said before. So NFT games, firm, sorry, uh, Animoca brands valued at $1 billion following an $80 million raise. So they've raised more funds. So this week's crypto game fundraising barrage continues as the firm behind the sandbox and F1 Delta time nets massive new capital. So crypto game publisher Animoca brand raised nearly $89 million uh, at a valuation of $1 billion. So again, this NFT space, I think it's got so much further to go. It's just the NFTs themselves that I just don't know about. And so I'm more interested in the platforms. Again, things like Engine, Wax, Chilies, all that sort of stuff. I'm, I'm more than happy to invest in those. But specific NFTs, I'm not artsy enough for that. And again, I've said that many times. Uh, you know, Let me know down below if you've bought NFTs and if any of them have really, really skyrocketed. I'd love to know, you know what type of NFT it was that you bought and the prices just continue to rise. Because from what I've heard, a lot of them have done the opposite. Uh, you know, they come out at these initial prices uh, and then they quickly fall back down to much lower prices. But that's not to say in five to 10 years time, they can't go up. All right, last but not least, Yep, the Bitcoin price is going down. And there's been a bit of FUD. What's our saviour Michael Saylor doing? He bought $15 million more BTC. So, And it was just on Thursday. So the purchase was made through May 13th for an average price of $55,387. Uh, $55, MicroStrategy now has 91,000 Bitcoin on its books for an average price of $24,000. So... Micro strategy and good old Michael Saylor, they're still buying Bitcoin. And again, there's all these other groups getting involved, you know, US bank firms getting ready to take custody of it. I really think what's going on at the moment is because the big players are here, they're going to market manipulate the crap out of it for a while to, you know, continue to build the best positions they can. And they think under 50,000 is a really good steal. And once they've basically kind of locked up as much as they can and suppressed the price for as long as they can, they're going to let it ride and they're going to watch it go to, you know, again, 200, 300, 400,000, whatever price they can get it to. And they will kind of sell bits and pieces on the way to the top and then they're going to dump it hard. That's what I think uh, is going to happen. That's my personal opinion, not, not financial advice. Now, last but not least, as we said, you know, some of the really good gainers. Polygon, they've just been, you know, 50% in the last seven days. That's pretty good and continuing to rise. Here we go. Matic slash Polygon came back down and touched the 50-day moving average not that long ago. So when was that? When did it touch? So just back in April 19th, so about a month ago. And then boom, just went on a rally. But look what it does when it starts to rally. I mean, it just grows and grows and grows. Then it goes sideways basically waits for the 50-day moving average to catch up. It's done this a few times. Goes up, 50-day moving average, goes up, 50-day moving average. We don't have a lot of price history for Matic because it hasn't been around that long and just goes on a rise. Now, even more crazy is comparing it against BTC. So again, pumps up, travel sideways, pumps up, travel sideways, pumps up. And I was talking about Matic this whole time. I kept saying, have a look at this against Bitcoin. It's traveling sideways. And it was just such a big accumulation phase. Touched the 50-day moving average. This is against Bitcoin though. Boom. Had a bit of a fall off. More sort of traveling sideways. But I guess a bit of a sell off. Boom. I really do think Polygon is going to be huge. I shudder to think what kind of price it gets, it's going to get to. I do think it's going to get hit pretty hard, like most altcoins, initially when Bitcoin gets on its run. When Bitcoin goes on its next run and pushes really hard, it's going to suck the air out of a lot of these altcoins. Now, they're not going to just completely and utterly dump and lose 50% of all that they're worth, but they will have a fairly heavy retracement. And they'll still be going up in their dollar value once they you know, kind of get to their leveling out point because Bitcoin will drag everything up. But once we get that next kind of big altcoin cycle, and particularly that last part of it, whew, I mean, you know, this is nearly, uh, what are we, at a dollar fourteen? is it? 
dollar fourteen. So yeah, a dollar fourteen. I think this could, and you know Polygon is still only number twenty six, so it's not that high up in the chart. I think it's possible you could see another five x, maybe even ten x from here. Now I'm not saying Polygon's going to get to sort of fifteen dollars or something like that. I'm just saying it could. It, it, it would not surprise me, particularly if we see Bitcoin at you know four hundred thousand dollars or something like that, which is still you know basically a ten x in Bitcoin. Then you absolutely could see this thing ten x and a whole lot more. All of these coins are kind of based on you know. Even sort of Ethereum so much, Ethereum's not based on Bitcoin. All these coins are based on just how well Ethereum and Bitcoin can do because they really are the leaders of the markets. I mean, Cardano at the moment, almost getting to that $2 range. I definitely think it could get to sort of 5 to $8. But again, that's based on how well Bitcoin does. If Bitcoin goes to three, dollars $400,000, then I think you're easily going to see Cardano at possibly around about $10 or more. That's a personal opinion, not financial advice. I never offer you that. That's it from me. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. If you are on that gain train at the moment, you've outperformed the market. Well done. Most of us are down a little bit. And I'll see you next time.